Look, I am your father. Join the dark side. This is going to be day one, automatic to manual conversion or swap. First thing you just want to do is take out your air box, battery, battery tray, take off your terminals of course, then your battery, then your battery tray, and this is basically where we're starting from. So what's next? Remove the ignition coil. You don't have to completely disconnect the cruise control module, you can just kind of set that off to the side there. Fuel filter and all that stuff, you will probably want to disconnect and just leave off hanging to the side. It's good to detail all the grounds as long as we can find them. There's one ground right here, which is under the filter box, and battery tray. The battery tray would sit right here. And then there's actually one directly underneath the battery tray that pops off into this harness and then goes into this main harness that runs by the cool rail. And when you see something like this that's bolted to a bracket that just goes nowhere, this would be a common ground harness. So all of these are probably grounds and they're grounded directly to the bracket and this would be sitting right underneath the filter box. And that would probably end up being something for a mass bank of sensors, maybe MAF. That's probably a MAF sensor ground or something like that. Right now we're working on taking off the harness because this harness is laid over like spaghetti or a spider web actually across the entire transmission, we have to remove the harness first. You can't just rip up the transmission without getting the harness out of the way. Pretty much going to be major step one is removing the harness. And once you get the harness out of the way, you'll have a much better idea of what to go about next. Well, we found the shift linkage. This comes from the driver's shift lever for the automatic. It's an actual cable that goes all the way over here and then down around under here. And you can see where this accordion shaped uh, boot, rubber boot, kind of like a CV boot kind of thing. And that gets plugged straight down into the transmission and that's your shift cable. So if you, you go to shift your car one day out of park and into drive and nothing happens and it just kind of free, free range there, free play, it's probably because your cable's broken. And it could be broken there or it could be broken at the actual shift lever up in your center console. Oh, it goes through the firewall. Yeah, that probably goes straight into the shift lever. I'm thinking like the same way as the stick shift, how it goes underneath the car. Mm -mm. But it goes through the firewall. Yep, and it goes straight into the center console, to the shift lever. Cable is actually hooked up to the shift lever. Cool. Same as the emergency brake. There's a little cable that goes all the way to the back. So tell the folks at home what you're doing now. Well, I'm just trying to figure out how to take the rest of the cable for the shifter from the transmission. There's a bolt, probably a 10 millimeter. If you can get through that, I think the whole thing will come off. Did you read what I told uh, Nin, what I think it was Ninja Tao on his probe project? He said you need children, a dwarf, or a Mazda engineer to get your little hands in there. Well, Mazda engineers match both of those experiences. Exactly. <laughs> that? <laughs> you shifted the transmission. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the parking brake is on. Oh god. I'll get my head right over. No, the uh, the emergency, you set the emergency brake, right? Yeah. Do you have wheel chucks? <laughs> uh, I do. Um, I don't know where they're at. They might be in the garage. That's funny. That's good to know. You can actually pull the transmission from there. Yeah. Because it's actually it's not locked there. It was you locked. You can just push and was pull locked. the it's whole entire. Actually, that might give me some more room. Towards me. Oh. Okay. Right. It's up here. This way. There you go. Right there. 
Yep. Yeah, my hand barely fits in there. Is that right? There you go. It's one. Both of them are out. Okay. Oh, that works. Man, what a pain in the ass. Wow. What a pain in the wrist. Okay, to get the shift cable off, i just give you a bigger view of what we're looking at here. Shift cable is right there, and there's a cotter pin in the bottom of that. And once you get that cotter pin out, then this cable will just come right off the mount. Like so. And then you can just pull the whole shift cable right out. Hell yeah. Good job, dude. Thank you. Alright, the next step that we did would be to disconnect the fuel filter. Actually, Andy did it. Disconnect the fuel filter. Turn the filter sideways. It will be full of fuel. It will also be pressurized. Unless you undo your fuel pump relay, start the car, pull the fuel pump relay, which you saw me do in a previous video for the head disassembly video. It's probably head disassembly one. Something like that. Uh, pull the fuel pump relay while the car is running, and it will depressurize the fuel lines. I forgot to do that, so we had to deal with pressurized fuel lines. It's not really that big of a deal. It doesn't get a whole bunch of gas, but that fuel filter is chock full of gas. So turn the fuel filter on its side as you take it out, and then go over to the grass or something, and then dump it upside down so all the fuel comes out. Well, we decided, Andy, smart idea, if we're going to lift up the harness or try and get the transmission out from the top, you have to disconnect all the harness, including the fuse box, and then everything connected to the fuse box, you might just be able to roll over and sit on top of the engine as you lift the transmission out. But that's a lot of disconnecting, so make sure you label everything, which we're not doing, um, and then set that aside. We don't need to label everything because we know exactly where everything goes back, right? We sure do. Yeah. So we're good. But make sure that you label everything. Andy's just finding all kinds of cool stuff today. All right, show him what you found. All right, so here's the, uh, where the shifter cable attaches to the transmission, this here. So I was just mowing it just for fun, to be honest. And then I realized something else was mowing, which is this. It has a D, I'm assuming that's drive. It's notched right there. That's the automatic transaxle rain sensor, which is usually hooked up electronically. On some models of the 626, you'll see that the cable is actually attached right about there. That sounds like reverse. <laughs> um, but on the 95, mine, uh, the cable is attached way over there. But it still controls the transaxle rain sensor with a cable. So the automatic 626i4, at least, is cable control. So let's say your car is stuck in gear. You could theoretically manually shift your car into the next gear. And I have heard of people getting stuck on the side of the road. Could have maybe started the car and gotten away. And you can move that even if the cable's attached to it. Usually there would be a cable, big long cable attached to that. Yeah, that guy. Usually that cable would be attached to that. And what you can do is actually just pull up on the entire cable, pull up or push down, and that will change the gear. In order to remove the fuse box, there are two 10 millimeter bolts for the automatic, which is different than the V6 fuse box that I ended up taking out. Uh, the 626, for whatever reason, bracket is much different. The bolts are underneath of the fuse box, and they are a pain to get to. Good job, Andy. Thank okay. you. All right, one thing I found that's worth noting on the automatic transmission is up here near the radiator, right side of the radiator, driver's side is the ignition control module. Now I wasn't sure if our automatics had that. I know that the probe has, but it's in a slightly different uh, location that's easier to find. Uh, if you have an ignition related issue, now the ignition control module has to be thrown into that loop. If the ignition control module was such an issue, we would have heard about it earlier. Since we haven't, I'm fairly certain that they're, they're pretty good. I'm gonna have to go and do some more research on the ignition control module. I'm pretty sure that you don't need that if you're going to do the swap. If you're going to a manual or if you have a manual transmission, you're not going to have that ignition control module because that combined with the ignition coil is combined into the manual distributor. It's all part of the distributor. And we keep finding really neat stuff. Just a lot of little different things that we weren't expecting. But we're having fun. 
Okay, we've disconnected and labeled just about everything on the harness here. As you can see, it's all connected. It's like a spider web. And we're hoping if we can fold this over and take the transmission out of the top here. And I'm sure you're going to ask, why are you trying to take the transmission out of the top instead of dropping it? Because the bolts on the cross member are stripped. When I went to the exhaust shop to have the exhaust fixed, the guy at the exhaust shop tried to take my cross member off, and he couldn't because the bolts were stripped. So knowing that my bolts are stripped, and knowing that the cross member is kind of out of the question because I don't have the tools to take it off, if an impact driver, a 400 pound torque wrench, you know, plus impact driver, professional set, can't get my cross member off, there's nothing I have. You know, I have like a one foot breaker bar. It's not going to do it. So the plan is to remove the harness, uh, drain the cooling system, remove the radiator, and that'll buy us this much clearance. Then remove the uh, cover, front cover, to the transmission there, and that'll buy us a little bit more clearance. Uh, remove the mounts, and then get the crane and try and bring the transmission up and out. I know that's not ideal, um, but it just seems like everything that I do isn't ideal. <laughs> it's not. It's not normal. Um, I don't really follow factory procedure, even though I have every factory procedure for the last 30 years on my bookshelf. I just, you know, march to the beat of my own drummer, I guess. So we're going to do things uh, a little bit different. Not by a choice, really. It's just, you know, we're just doing what we have to do with what we got. And uh, I recommend that you do the same, you know. Get, do what you got to do. Okay, next step that we're going to do is uh, remove the radiator, which requires us to drain the coolant. When you drain the coolant, open your radiator cap. Same thing for the V6. Open up a radiator cap. That way um, you can get the air in there and it will drain a lot faster. Yep. <laughs> it's on there tight. Out of all the angles for it to be, this is like the worst one. It's like I have no leverage. Yeah. I hurt my wrist when I tried that last time. Man. It's a, it's a lot, it puts a lot of pressure on your wrist. I just can't grip it the right way. I think it's gonna break. <laughs> just one more thing I'm gonna break today. Can you see there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm totally gonna break this thing. Um, Why so tight? Because I tightened it so freaking much. To tighten that so hard? Yeah, I know that now. Live and learn. Don't over tighten your pet cock because you won't get it back off. Ah. Alright, it's been five minutes and the coolant strains, so now we are going to start removing the radiator. And the purpose of that is to give us more clearance so that when we pop out the transmission tomorrow morning, we will have enough clearance, hopefully. So, uh, in order to take out the radiator, there are two mounting bolts one here, one there, and there are these brackets for the radiator. And you can take the, just disconnect your fans. There's a, uh, a wire connector that goes over to the body over there. Uh, somewhere. Yeah. Is that it? That's it. Okay. That's it. Yellow. Little yellow connectors. Disconnect that. And you can just leave the fans on and pull the whole radiator up with it. <laughs> There's rollerblading. You are a mess, right? Uh, I can go back now. <laughs> it takes skills, that's why. Yeah. Just practice, you gotta practice more. Uh, it's hard. <laughs> okay, Andy came up with a neat little system here. He put some masking tape on uh, and labeled the parts. It has two screws, otherwise those screws will be just sitting there loose. So he masking taped the screws to the bracket with an X and then marked on the frame an X so you know exactly where it goes. How smart is that? I think we got a new system going here. Awesome. Good stuff, man. All right, after you get those two mounting brackets off, you have to take off this hose from the this hard pipe, radiator hard pipe, and that hose goes down into the overflow down there. Next is remove the connection to the upper radiator hose and the lower radiator hose. It doesn't matter which side you do. It could be this side, or it could be the one connecting to the block over there, to the coolant rail. Which, whichever one is easiest for you, does not matter, oh, as long as they're disconnected. Once you get the upper radiator hose and the lower radiator hose disconnected, 
you are going to need to disconnect the transmission cooler line which is this line right here and there should be a flange with uh, a rubber hose attached both on this side and there should be two lines there's an inlet and an outlet both of them are right here and you can disconnect both of them right here that way you don't have to worry about trying to disconnect them at the source which is that big nut right there don't even worry about that just disconnect it down there make sure your drain pan is below it to catch any fluid once it starts coming out because all your transmission fluid is going to come out through there so it might be a good idea to try and drain your transmission from the drain plug on the transmission first before you disconnect that so you want to do that first <laughs> in order to disconnect the transmission cooler lines which this is that one that comes back here you want to first drain the transmission fluid out. If you're going to do a swap, you want to drain the transmission fluid. And here's your transmission drain bolt. Yep, 14. There you go. There you go. That's definitely transmission fluid. And it looks pretty clean. Yeah, I had it changed recently. Smells good. Like this year. Probably, but this year for me is like within the past 50 miles. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've drained the transmission, we are dismantling the transmission cooler lines. I shouldn't say we. Andy's doing all the work. Because I'm, I'm just we're, sitting here drinking. We're trying. And Andy's doing all the work. This is a great friendship. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been there for the life of the car. No, actually, that was just oh. changed because I had a transmission leak. Almost killed my car. I got a video on it. I don't know how many times I've had to sell Andy so far. Yeah, there's a video on that. Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't seen all 300 of your videos. Actually, there is. There's 100 now. I've seen most of them. There's a ridiculous seen, amount. One day I sat there for a couple hours and I watched most of the videos. No, that's got to come out. There you go. Ooh. Is that one leaking? Jizzy. Yeah, it's got transmission fluid. Okay, well, where's the drain pan? Alright, it's right next to the jack. Wait. How does that get transmission fluid in there? Because it comes from the transmission. Yeah, but it goes into the radiator. Yeah. There's two parts of the radiator. Within the radiator? Yes. Mind blown. Yeah. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> hey, my friend. Welcome to Mother Russia. In Soviet Russia, transmission, the transmission fluid, fluid, fluid drains you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we've drained both the transmission cooling lines. Oh, we gotta undo this connector. There we go. Okay, hold on. Yep. It's yeah. a win. Uh, snagging on something over here. Okay, you should be good. You good over here? Look at that. Very cool. Where should I put this? <laughs> um, Plug in the car? Okay. No, that's the old one. So, we are going to reuse the radiator fans. So, for the time being, just throw that on the rocks right there. On the rocks. Shaking? Yes. Not stir. Well, you can shake it all you want, but it's not going to make a difference. <laughs>